Good morning, good morning. This is Elder Mike with Higher Ground Temple at 203 Vine Street in Camden, New Jersey. It is so good to uh, be back on this morning. Here we are, uh, Thursday morning, amen. Another day uh, that we are yet blessed. Thursday morning, July 9th, amen. Love this day. Love the fact that God woke me up today, uh, blessed with a power and with a purpose, uh, with some things to do, amen, some things that He has assigned for me, because I know when I do those things, He has assigned for me uh, that there are blessings on the way. And I see Patricia Phillips uh, jumping right on early this morning. Good to see you out there, Patricia Phillips. Welcome to July 9th, 2020. Amen. It is a beautiful day to be here. Uh, God has blessed us yet again while we slept and while we slumbered and while our bodies recovered. Amen. Uh, from all that was taken out of us the day before, uh, he watched over us. He kept us. He protected us. Amen. So we're going to go forth today. Amen. Focused on the things of God. Amen. Amen. So we are going to focus on the things of God. Good morning to you. It is a pleasure to be on with you. Um, and I, I'll see you now. That actually is funny because that's actually what, what I just did. Amen. Was actually what we're talking about today. Amen. We're talking about distractions. Amen. And what happens about 30 seconds into the lesson. Amen. My watch buzzes. And what do I do? I look down on it. I got distracted. Amen. What if I was driving my car and that happened? Oh, would have been, would have been, it would have been a wreck. Amen. But I thank God that that wasn't the case. Pamela Vasquez and Jerry coming on this morning. Good to see you both. Um, I know uh, my wife's out there walking on her own today, um, so certainly uh, a blessing. Looking forward to seeing you back in the place in a little bit, hon. Um, but I just want to certainly touch on today um, the, the subject of distraction, amen? And, and as I said, what do we do? We start off... 30 seconds into the broadcast, my, my, my watch vibrates, amen. That's one of the things we're going to be talking about today is that technology, amen, that technology can be a distraction to us. That technology, amen, um, can take us off of the task. It can lead us away from those things that we've been called to do. Um, but with God, certainly we can use the technology, and I love that we can use the technology uh, to get the word out like this, but sometimes we can get so into our technology that we don't see what's going on in the world around us. We don't pick up on the needs of the people around us. Amen. And I'm going to start off with this little story. And this wasn't a part of my lesson, um, but we're going to throw it out there because it's one of the things. Donna Hawkins, good to see you on this morning. Well, God bless you, woman of God. Um, so we're talking about distractions today. And it's one of the things I think about technology being one of those distractions. I'm going to start off with this little story. It's, it's actually a video I saw. Never was a big fan of the technology when it first came out. Really stayed away from it a lot, um, and I still try not to get too sucked into it. And this is the and this is the video that I saw that really struck me and put on my heart exactly why I have this problem with with all this technology. And the things that the, the 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 video is this man walking along and he's got a piece of paper in his hand, and you can tell he's looking for something. And and this and this young man is walking along with his paper. Young woman walks by him, and he and he sees her. He's looking for the address, so he asks her, "Where is this?" And so and so now the, there's no there's no audio with it, um, but you see um, little snippets going along. Where now now it shows her showing him to the place he was going to, and then them dating, and then them getting married, and having kids, and growing old together. And then it flashes back to the beginning, back where he's looking for that address again. But this time, he's got a phone in his hand. And I guess he's looking down at his GPS, trying to figure out which way to go, amen? And yet, and yet this same young lady walks by him, and he doesn't even see her, amen? He doesn't even notice her, doesn't even see her. She walks right by, and he never even picks up on her presence, amen? And so this is one of the things we got to watch out for with this technology, is that we don't get so set up living in the palm of our hand, amen, that our blessing might walk right by us. Or, e or even more important than that, maybe somebody in need might walk right by us. There may be someone that lamenting uh, on that sidewalk, we're walking right by them, but we're looking down at our hand and we don't pick up on the needs of the people around us. Um, so I just want to say that that's, that's one of the distractions we're going to talk about today. But because that came up with my watch and me looking down and not staying focused on the people that are in front of me, 
I wanted to start out with that right away. Um, so we're talking today, Don Holland and Stitch Thomas coming back on. Ah, uh, gentlemen, it's good to see you out there. We are looking today at, at don't let those distractions lead to your destruction. Amen? Because we all have a work to do. We all have a purpose to do. We all have things to complete. We all have assignments from God. Amen. And, and those distractions can take us off track. Amen. And instead of getting the blessings that God has for us, they can lead to what? They can lead to destruction. Amen. So what is a distraction? Amen. A distraction is anything that takes your attention away from what you're supposed to be doing. Um, Latin comes from the root dis which means apart and let me get this one and try here which means to drag amen so it's anything that drags you that draws you apart from those things that you are supposed to be doing and as we're going to see in our lesson today one of the interesting things is distraction doesn't have to be necessarily even something that's sinful it doesn't have to be something that's evil but it's just something that distracts you that takes you away from what you're supposed to be doing and it's not what you're supposed to be doing so so sometimes i think we think well if the, if the distraction if the distraction i could be out there i'm called to do this this morning at eight o'clock now now there may be an opportunity for me to go out and feed the homeless today at eight o'clock but you know what if God wanted me here, if this is what I've been called to do, if this is where my responsibility lies at 8 o'clock on Thursday morning, and I'm out doing that, that can even be a distraction. Um, it, what, sometimes you may have a guest over. It's funny. We're going to be we're gonna be looking at Mary and Martha from the Bible today. And we always say, my mother is Mary and my father is Martha. And... And my father, because my father, as he gets distracted, he, he's so busy making arrangements. He's so busy making preparations. And it's great things, and it comes from a heart of love, and it comes from a heart of service that he has. But, but there are times, amen, when what he was supposed to be doing was sitting down and spending time with the family, sitting down and spending time with friends. So, so, now, so, so we've got to be aware, amen, of what we are supposed to be doing so that we stay on track, amen, and don't get pulled apart, get pulled away from those things that we're supposed to be doing. And, and, and the one thing that, that we always need to stay focused on is Jesus. Amen. And that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you're in prayer, in study 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It doesn't mean you're worshiping 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, but we got to keep our eyes at all times no matter what we're doing focused on Jesus. Cuz I know I got a job I have to go to. I know most of you out there have jobs that you've got to go to. You've got family that you've got to look out for, family that you've got to provide for. You've got people that need your attention. Amen. So so we're not talking about amen when we're saying don't take our eyes off Jesus. We're not saying you got to be in prayer 24 hours a day. You got to be but but the thing is you got to be about God's work all the time. You got to be doing things that are good and pleasing. Amen. To the Lord. Amen. Um Hebrews 12, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. That's right. Jesus stayed focused. Amen. Jesus, and that's what I'm saying. Oh, Eve Johnson out there. Deborah Cream coming on. Good to see you on here this morning, Deborah. Um, certainly have been great seeing you on Sunday morning, my sister Eve. I, I wish I got a chance to talk to you every once in a while Sunday. We're going to make that happen this week. Amen. But... But so we see here, we've given a race, we've been given a race to be run, amen? And in order, and in order to stay, in order to win that race, we have to stay focused on the course. We have to stay focused on the race. We got to focus on our breathing as we run. We, we got to focus on the pace that we're setting, amen? Why? So that we can make sure that we finish the race. Amen. And we've got to keep our eyes in our race, in our Christian race. Amen. We have to keep our eyes focused on Jesus because Jesus is the author and the finisher. He's the one that took it, took on our sins. Amen. So that we could come boldly before the throne, humbly, 
Humbly, amen, because we know it's not by our own power, but boldly before the throne where we can seek God, where we can talk to God, where we can ask God for direction, where we can count on God, amen, to lead us day by day. So don't lose that focus. Don't don't take your eyes off that prize. Don't take your eyes off that mark, amen, because God has a plan and a work for you to do. Um, so we thank God for that. And we're gonna what we're going to do today, we're going to stay focused, amen, on the things of God. And we see distraction. We, we look at what are some of the some of the downsides, amen, to distraction. What are some of the ways that that distraction can harm you, can hurt you, can can keep you um, from progressing to the levels that God has for you? Um, one thing we look at distractions can cause things to take longer to happen, amen. I know, I know everybody here has experienced this at one point in time or another, whether, whether you're working on a job, amen, where you've constantly got people coming to you with questions, where constantly, like I work at the bank, and constantly there's always, you know, I'm trying to get a report done, and, and there's a customer coming in about every three minutes saying, no, I don't want you, I gotta, I gotta wait for Mike, I gotta wait for Mike, I gotta, and, I, and instead of, so, so I, get, I get three minutes in on that report before the next distraction comes along. Then, then I'm working on that report for another three minutes, and a teller comes along and has a question. And, and a teller needs an override. And a CSR has a question on how to do something. So these distractions, amen, can cause it to take so much longer for us to get our work done. One of my favorite things on the job used to be to go in on a Saturday morning when there was no one else there. And I would get done more in two hours than I would in a 40-hour work week. Why? Because I didn't have the distractions. And so this is the thing. You may get where you want to go, and you will get what God has for you. Because if God promised it to you, he's going to make sure you get it. But what you do by, by falling into these traps of all these distractions, all these things leading you astray, is you, is you delay that blessing. You delay yourself in getting to what God has for you. Amen? Um, and we also look at, this is the other thing I've noticed about the distractions at work, is that it affects the overall quality of my work. Amen? That, that if I'm at work, and I'm working on a project, and, and I've got these constant distractions. What happens is I'm, I'm up to a certain point, amen, and, 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 I, and I'm moving along in, and I'm good, and I, and, I, and I know exactly where I'm going with my next point. I know exactly where I'm going on my next step, and then three or four distractions hit me. And now when I go back to that report, when I go back to that task, when I go back to that project, now I've lost where I was at. You know what? There's an important step in there that I didn't do. Why? Because I got distracted, because I got taken away from what I was supposed to be doing. And so what happens is now, now when I pick back up, I was, I was on step five. And when I went back, I jumped to step seven. So, so these distractions can affect the overall quality of your work, amen? So, so when we look at that from the spiritual sense, amen? If, if we're focused on Jesus and we, and we just take, take a week off, take a couple days off, take a couple hours off, when we go back, amen, we, we, we sometimes end up out of step. We, we were in a nice rhythm. We had things going. We were progressing. And what happens? Then we miss a step. Amen. And when you miss a step, amen, it affects everything that comes after it. So, so we've got to make sure we don't get distracted. Why? Number one, that distraction will take it longer for you to get to that blessing, get to that thing that God has for you. The distraction is going to affect the overall um, quality of your work. It affects the quality of what you're doing if you're allowing distractions to constantly be coming in and interfering. Amen. Um, I'll tell you what, it leads to negative consequences for you. And I can tell you a story from back when I first started working at the bank and I was helping out a customer and they were doing an international exchange and I, and I had, it was like a $10,000 international exchange. And what happened was when I got done doing all their paperwork, amen, and I filled out a ticket that I needed to, that I needed to give to a teller, amen, to put everything through to finalize everything. And what happened? I got distracted. Amen. I got distracted. I got sidetracked. Somebody came up and asked me a question. I went and helped them with something. And what happened when I left, I put the ticket that I was supposed to give to the teller in with all the paperwork and filed it away. Now what happened was, um, it, I filed that file away and didn't realize until two days later that that ticket hadn't gone through. And now it was an international exchange. So now the exchange rates 
have changed. Amen. And and now that cost that cost about a six hundred dollar amen loss to the bank. Amen. Because of the difference in the exchange rates from the time that we gave him his money until the time we processed what we were supposed to do. So this is why we need to avoid the distractions, amen, because because they have negative consequences for you. It can lead to negative consequences for you, and, and what might even be worse, it can lead to negative consequences for people that are dependent on you. It can lead to negative consequences because it's not all just about you, but there may be somebody that's assigned to you, amen, to, to, that, that their salvation is dependent on you. And now what happens is because you got distracted, they can be negatively affected. Their salvation can be delayed. Their salvation, it can affect those around you. It can affect that brother, that cousin, that niece, that nephew, amen, that, that was dependent on you, that was looking to you, that was reading you like they were reading their Bible. That distraction can have negative consequences, not just for you, um, but for everyone around you that depends on you, that you are their minister, that you are their Bible. And I'll tell you the other thing, these distractions, they leave room for Satan or for the world to enter in. Amen. When, when we think, well, you know what? I'm just going to take a week off from Jesus this week. Amen. Now, now what happens when I'm walking arm in arm with Jesus? Amen. The devil can't get between us. Amen. But but let me be walking down the street with Jesus. Amy Dawson, good to see you out there. Um, follow you on, on Facebook a lot. It's good to see you out there watching. We're talking today about not letting those distractions, amen, lead to your destruction. And like I said, it's not a matter of you got to be studying your Bible, praying, worshiping 24 hours a day, but you got to make sure no matter what you do, amen, that you're walking the same path that Jesus has designed for you, that you don't get sidetracked to the left or to the light with pretty baubles. And we were just talking about, we're talking about um, leaving room for this, for Satan or for the world to get into your life when you get out of lockstep with Jesus. I um, mean, think about because if I'm walking down the street with Jesus and I'm arm in arm with him, that devil can't get between us. That world can't get between us. But what happens? I see I see something pretty in the window over here. We're walking along the shops and I see, oh, that suit looks sharp. And I, and I, and I break rank and I walk over to that window while Jesus keeps heading down the street. Now, for as long as I stand there looking at that nice suit that I thought I had to have, that nice watch that I thought I had to have, as long as I stand there, now there's separation between me and Jesus. That leaves room for the world to get in. That leaves room for my cares to get in. That leaves that leaves room for my desires to get in. That leaves room for Satan, amen, now to come in between us. So, so we need to keep walking that lockstep with Jesus. Again, not, not necessarily praying 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 360. 65 days a year. But always, when, when you take those um, those times away from those activities, when you take time away from them, make sure that you're staying in holy activities. Make sure you're staying in activities that God will walk with you through it. He's not, when you're out there drinking, when you're out there partying, if you're using those as your distractions, oh, see, that's the thing. You're separating yourself from Jesus there. You're leaving room, amen, for the world to get in, the desires of your flesh to get in, for Satan himself Amen. To get into that relationship, to take you off your course, to knock you off your path to a degree where it's going to be a whole lot harder to get back on, if not impossible. Amen. And we know that we know it's not impossible because all things are possible with Jesus Christ who strengthens us. Amen. But why put ourselves through those headaches? Why why delay our blessings by, by going off and looking at the baubles instead of walking where we're supposed to walk? Amen. Um, so we see it, and we see it in the natural. Think about driving. You see a text. What happens? You look down. Boom. You're you're in a wreck. Amen. We look at. I talked about at work how distractions can affect you at work. Um. And 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 let's look at some things. There are some. There are a lot of things that can distract us. Excuse me while I take a drink. And actually, let and let me go to our scripture here too. Was one of the other things that I want to stress to you too is. Um, it's not always something that's obviously sinful, something that's that's evil, something that, that God wouldn't be proud of you for doing that can be a distraction. Um, but it's just anytime you're not doing what you've been called to do. It's anytime you let something take you off the path that you've been assigned to walk. And it says here, I want to read from you. I talked about I talked about when I was growing up. Dad was Martha, mom was Mary. Dad was always busy, amen, cleaning up the house, getting the dinner ready, worried about all the seating and all that. And mom would sit and enjoy the company, amen. And it says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, 
He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help. Amen. So it's not enough that she's distracted. She wants to get her sister distracted too. Amen. And and Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. So again, that that distraction, amen, doesn't have to be something that's wrong. It doesn't have to be something that's bad. It's just something that takes you off of the duty that you've been given, the assignment that you have. If if I was to wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to go be a pastor, you know what? That would be a distraction, amen? Why? Because God hasn't called me to do it. And, and, and hey, nobody would say, oh, going and being a pastor is a bad thing, amen? But but for me, it would be. Why? Because it's not what I've been called to do. I've been called to be here at Higher Ground Temple. I've been, I've been called to do this broadcast, amen, to try and educate and draw people closer to God. God has said nothing to me about go be a pastor. So, so, even, so even though that may seem noble, even though it may seem like I'm dedicating to myself, to, to myself to God, that would be all my flesh. Why? Because God didn't call me to do it. Because it's not the path that I am called to walk on. It would be what? It would be a distraction. Amen. And we've already looked at what distractions do. We look at how distractions can delay your blessings. We look at how distraction can cause you harm. We can look at how how it affects the overall quality of your work. And I don't want those things to happen. Why? Because the things that we do for the kingdom, amen, are too important to allow that to happen. Amen. So some of the things that can be distractions for us, amen. And there are a lot of them. Um, Number one, one of the biggest things that can be a distraction for us is our past. Amen. That past can come up and it can bite you um, in, in a place you don't want to be bit. Amen. Because it says our past was right. When we're driving in our car, the windshield is what? Probably about four feet wide, about three feet high. Amen. And how big is that rear view mirror? That rear view mirror is about yay big. Why? Because you know what? We, we want to be able to look at the past, amen, to look at the mistakes we made, to learn from it, to get better through it. But if we're sitting there staring at the rear view mirror all the time, we're going to rear end the car in front of us. Somebody's going to come to a red light. Somebody's going to come to a stop sign. And if we're staring in the rear view mirror, boom, that's a distraction, amen, that we do not need. So, so don't let your past distract you. If God calls you to do something, you're supposed to be doing something, um, don't let that, amen, um, focus on the past, distract you. Don't, don't focus on, well, well, I tried this before, God, and it didn't work. No, if he called you to do it now, maybe he didn't call you back then. Maybe then was, was the test run. Maybe that was the trial. Maybe that was where you needed to learn the lessons to do it right this time. Um, so, so when God calls you, when you have a task, don't be focused on your past. Amen. Don't think, don't think I can't do this because I failed at it before. Don't think I'm not worthy to do this because I sinned back then. Amen. That's not you anymore. You are transformed. You are a new creature. Amen. In God. So don't so don't focus on the past. That past is, is a distraction, amen, that has broken, that has stopped, that has stalled many, 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 amen, a great work that God had planned for somebody. Why? Because they were focused on the past. Amen. Learn from your past. Amen. And move on forward. And just remember, whenever you start thinking on that past, whenever you start dwelling on that past, when you, whenever you start thinking, man, why is it that I'm having these problems? Why is it that I'm called to do this when I know I can't do it because I already tried it? Remember that. Remember how small that rear view mirror is and remember how big the windshield is um, and, and just follow God where he sends you to go. And what's one of the other things, man? One of the other things that can really distract us is those worldly cares. Amen. When when Jesus gave the parable of the four soils, he talked about the the, the, so, the there was the seed sower. Amen. Is dropping the seed, and he talks about there's seed that falls 
on thorny ground. Amen. And so, and so what that thorny ground is, he says that refers to the cares of the world. Um, as you grow spiritually, as you, as you grow in strength in Jesus, the cares of the world sometimes can grow up. Amen. Uh, uh, against your good fruitful plant. Amen. That's getting ready to burst forth. That's getting ready to bear fruit. Those, those cares of the world, those thorns and those weeds can come and choke out the plant. Amen. And we don't want, amen, the cares of the world to choke out what God has for us. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Stop stop settling for what you want. Stop settling for what you need. And start accepting what God has for you. Um, the scriptures tell us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Um, so watch out for those cares of the world. Amen. If, if God has given you a vision, he is going to give you the provision to complete it. Amen. So I just tell you, watch out for those cares of the world. Um, wait, when you have to do, when you have to go to the job, you do the best job that you can while you're there. God is going to honor that. He's, he's going to make sure that you have the provision. He's going to make sure you have the need. Since I don't, I don't want to give you an illustration here. Um, since I have started doing this broadcast, why? Because, because I'm not doing this broadcast. I haven't, I haven't asked anybody for a dime. I haven't asked anybody for a nickel. I'm doing it. Why? Because it's the path I was called to walk. And I'm going to tell you, my, my bank account has grown many times over. My bank account has grown faster doing this. Haven't added anything else, changed it, just adding this in um, because I haven't allowed myself to be distracted. I've been on here every time that I possibly could be on here. Um, God has honored it and God has taken care of not just making sure that I survive the day, but each day he's making sure that I thrive as well. So, so as tempting as it might be when they offer you the overtime and say, we need you to come in on Sunday. We need you to come in on Wednesday when you're usually in Bible study. We need you to come in on Saturday when and what you really want to do, what you really feel led to do is go to your child's soccer game, go to your child's baseball game, and, and you and you give it up. Why? Because the chair cares of the world. Amen. That extra check, that overtime, that time and a half, that double time. Sure, I'll come in on Christmas. That's triple time. Amen. But you know what? If God didn't want you on there on Christmas, amen, then don't go. Don't let that be a distraction to you. Amen. Because, because that little bit that you get, you you know it's going to something you didn't need anyway. You you know you know you know that when you're doing it, amen, um, as a distraction and not as a calling, amen. That that will not last. That only what we do for Christ, amen, is going to last. So don't let those worldly cares pop up and be a distraction to you. And and I want to tell you this too. Um, our gifts can be a distraction to us. Amen. And I, and I know it seems like, as I said, when I was talking earlier, I said a distraction doesn't necessarily have to be an ugly thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be an evil thing. Um, sometimes even the most beautiful thing, amen. And don't we know it very often that beautiful thing can be a distraction. Amen. So sometimes even our gifts, um, because what happens, we start singing Give you an illustration. We start singing in the church choir. Amen. We so we start singing in the church choir, or or we start or we start teaching in the church, right? And what happens? All of a sudden, people are telling you, "Oh, you're a great teacher. You should you should go out and do this. Oh, you're a great singer. You should come join our band. Oh, you're a great dancer. You should come over here and leave that place where you've been called to be. Come over. They're not letting you do your praise dance the way you should do your praise dance. You come over to our church and we'll let you do that praise. And we'll have you praise dancing every Sunday. Amen. But you know what? That's a distraction. Amen. That beautiful thing, that gift that God has given you. Amen. Because you went off and used it in a distraction in something that pulled you apart, that dragged you away from where you were supposed to be, now, now that beautiful gift, amen, has become a distraction. That beautiful gift is now going to have all the effects of distraction have. It's going to cause a delay in your blessing. That beautiful gift is going to cause some, some room, amen, for the world or for Satan to get in. That beautiful gift is going to cause the quality of your work, amen, to, to deteriorate, amen. Um, I think about someone I know, know very well, was told me one time, they praise dance one time, 
Um, and and they did such a great do- job. They got such kudos. Everyone told them how great they were, how wonderful they were. And, and the next time they got out the praise dance, they were so full of themselves. They said that they completely flopped. They said it was a complete disaster that people could barely say and watch. Amen. Why? Because they allowed amen the distraction, amen, of that gift, amen, to get into their head, to get into their heart, um, and to take them off of the path, to stop dancing for the reason why. The reason they danced before was just for the Lord, and it made it beautiful. Now they started dancing for people as a what? As those people were a distraction, amen. Started dancing for those people as a distraction, amen. And the whole thing went off the rails, amen. So so we also look at one, one, of, the, one of the last distraction things that we're going to look at that can be that distraction that takes us off track is is our is people amen sometimes the people that are around us amen can be that distraction that drags us off track amen um we look at it david had everything he ever wanted david was a king david was successful in all he did and then what happened he got distracted by what by Bathsheba, amen and she looked good on that roof amen and what happened it caused him now to to get off track amen and he and he had chaos in his family every day after amen he had constant blood he had constant war he had his son amen coming against him trying to steal the throne out from away from him. why was he allowed that distraction to come in so so watch the people that you allow into your life as you take this walk. Amen. And, and we've, I, I gave a lesson before on the company that you keep. Amen. So, so just keep in mind, don't walk with people who are heading a different direction than you. If you're going north, walk with people going north. If you're going south, walk with people going south. Amen. Because what happens, those that are heading in different directions are going to be what? A distraction. Amen. So we want to make sure that our our distractions, amen, do not lead to our destruction. Now I want to tell you, um, you know, there are there are some good distractions out there. I know there have been many times where I've been so focused on a word, been so focused on a lesson, amen, and I've been studying and I've been reading, and I think I got a grasp on it, but I can't quite get there. And, and so when I and so and so sometimes that distraction to take me away from because the mind's still working on it while we're doing other things the mind can still be working on the thing as long as the things that we're doing is our distraction those things that we're doing to take a little break from the work Amen are still things that Jesus would approve of when I when I when I need a distraction I go I, I go spend some time with the wife when I have a distract when I need distraction I'll go walk some time in the woods Amen but that's not all the time because you know what. I'm just I'm just like everybody else out there, amen. Sometimes the distraction, I'll, I'll hop on, I'll play a little app on my phone, and next thing you know, it's two hours later, and I'm still playing that same stupid game that's doing nothing for me, and while I was doing it, nothing new came to me, amen. So I just call on you now. Don't let the distractions take you off track. Don't let the distractions keep you from getting to all that God has for you. Amen. And again, I'm not telling you you got to pray 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365, being your word 24, 7, 365, worshiping 24, 7, 365. But the thing is, amen. And he, and he said it in, in Romans, or I'm sorry, he said it in, um, I'm sorry, it was... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Hebrews, I'm saying Romans, Hebrews 12 and 2, to, to keep your eyes fixed on the Lord in all things that you do. Let nothing come between you and him. Let no distraction take you off your path. Um, so I thank you all for tuning in today. I think I see uh, Sister Phyllis Kelly came on there. God bless you, woman of God. Good to see you out there today. I'm glad that you all tuned in. I hope that you all got something out of this that is going to improve your walk with the Lord, that's going to help you get to the blessings that he has designed for you. And I, and, and I just tell you, go out there, have a great day today. Before you go out, ask God, where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to do today? And when he gives you the answer, don't be distracted. Don't get off track. Don't let don't let all these other things, amen, affect you. But do just what he's called you to do. Because if you do, all oh, the blessings that are out there for you. So go out there. You have a blessed day today. Win some souls for the kingdom. And certainly now we're on Thursday. We're coming up on Sunday. We're going to be out at the Croc Center again, 1865 Harrison Avenue. Come join Higher Ground Temple, the church without walls, out in the parking lot. You, you can worship God, amen anywhere in the world. So come on out to Camden, 1865 Harrison Avenue. We would love to see you in the place. God bless you all. Love you and have a great day.